<laughs> All right, everybody. Hi, I'm Totenkopf, and welcome to Biomining Basics and setting up a biomining lab. Um, over the next 45 minutes, or however long it takes me to speak, because I'm kind of a quick speaker, if I go too quickly, just tell me to stop or slow down. Um, I will be covering what is biomining, why you should be interested, or if you are already kind of interested, I uh, want to give you a little push to actually get you to do something. Um, talk about what kind of things you can mine, why would you want a biomining lab, hardware that you can use for the lab, software you can use for the lab, and then any questions y'all may have. So what is biomining? It is the uh, tracking of any biological function or process, um, and it satisfies a need or want for tracking this information. It applies some of the process and processes and tools used with data mining and mirrors some of the beliefs and goals of the quantified self movement. Um, so before I go on though, how many of y'all have at least heard of data mining? Yay, that's most of you. Okay, you've heard of it, do you know what it is? Yes, so I'll sound smart compared to y'all. Um, but <laughs> data mining is the extraction of I useful information. What? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still hung up on the fact that I've never heard quantified self. I'm going to be going over it. That's why I have an hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> data mining is the extraction of useful information from a large set of data. And it, um, they have an acronym, uh, DIC, that they use for data mining. And der, her, 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 her. Uh, DIC stands for Data, Information, and Knowledge. You start with data, which is uh, any facts, numbers, or uh, text that can be processed by a computer. Then you take that and convert it into information, which you get from um, using patterns, associations, or relationships that you find amongst all the data. And then you take that and you get knowledge. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> okay, so how does it fucking work? How do you get from data to information to knowledge? Well, you can uh, use modeling, which is the act of building a model in one situation where you know the answer and then apply it to another situation where you don't. It's um, a technique that's been around for centuries, but most people start using it more because the resources needed to um, uh, ne the resources necessary to process a large amount of data in using modeling has just become available with, you know, newer and faster computers. Uh, you can also use classes, uh, which uses stored data um, to locate data in predetermined groups. Clusters are, is, uh, are data items, which are grouped according to logical relationships or consumer preferences. Sequential patterns which is data um, being mined to anticipate behavior patterns and trends. Uh, sequential patterns is most commonly used in biomining. So how does data mining relate to biomining? Well, uh, one of the major points of biomining is generating a lot of data. You sit there and you track everything that you want to know about yourself. You know, how, off, how long do I sleep? My quality of sleep? How often do I have sex? How much do I poop in a day? Stuff like that. And then you use data mining software to plow through um, and get dick. And then information and knowledge is gathered once, uh, once you do the uh, data mining and can be used in various um, situations. So the quantified self movement, which Nikki was asking about, thanks. Um, is a global collaboration of users and tool makers interested in the personal meaning of personal data. Basically, it's people who are interested in tracking every little thing about their day-to-day -day lives and then uh, using it. Well, some people use it, most of them just like going, hey, I found this way to track this data and share it with everybody else. Uh, the first quantified self meetup group was in San Francisco in 2008. Uh, there's now 27 quantified self meetup groups, and they have a conference in California every year where 
they all gather around and talk about new ways that they found to track their data, what they use the data for, et cetera, et cetera. Aspects of the quantified self. Um, whereas biomining is just stuck on biological functions and processes, the quantified self uses health, productivity, mood, finances, how social you are, basically any aspect of your life. How does it relate to biomining? Well, like I said, the quantified self is about self-tracking, which is a huge chunk of biomining. The meetup groups and their blog is a great source of um, information for people who are new to biomining, and um, their meetups are also a good place to meet other people who are interested in self-tracking, can give you tips. What? I've actually never been to one of their meetup groups because I think the quantified self, the name itself sounds kind of dumb. <laughs> and I'm not interested in learning to track my finances because I don't care about my finances, which is why I'm poor. And <laughs> I just care about the biological stuff. So why should you be interested in biomining? Well, you can uh, use it to collect baselines know when something is really wrong with you instead of just thinking it's wrong with you. You know, when you feel a little pain, is it a normal pain or is it, oh, just a one-off thing or am I imagining something because somebody else over there says that they're feeling kind of funny. And then you have the data to back you up and you should also know why you feel the way you do. It drives me crazy when everybody is brought up to believe that they're unique little snowflakes, and then when they go to uh, the doctor's office, they say, oh, I have a pain here, and the doctor tells you what they think it is, and people are like, oh, okay, that's cool. And um, so that that's a good thing. <laughs> So, not really, I'm being kind of sarcastic, but you can't tell because I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> hooray! So, for example, about a month or so ago, um, I started feeling a pain in my torso, and I'm like, huh, that's kind of new. A couple days later, it progressed, it didn't go away. So I finally went to the doctor, and I'm like, hey, I have this pain in my torso. It's about a six or a seven on the pain scale. And it feels like a pucker fish is like bouncing around in my torso. And she's like, oh, it could be your gallbladder. And I'm like, no, it's not my gallbladder. Oh, well, it could be um, your appendix. I'm like, no, I, d I don't think that's it because my parents have both had their gallbladders and their appendixes removed. And, you know, so I pushed her and pushed her and pushed her. She's like, okay, go, to the, go do an MRI. Went to take an MRI, and the uh, technician's like, oh, it's a cyst the size of an orange. And I'm like, fuck you, doctor, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> and she called me up, and she's like, well, I guess it wasn't your appendix or your gallbladder. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so that's why it's good to know how you normally feel and you know, when you deviate from that. Motivation and self-improvement. Biomining is great for people who, are, who have to see progress. A lot of people like to weigh themselves every day to see that half an ounce drop off the scale. Um, Biomining, you have a huge line graph that shows, oh, I started over here, and now I'm like here. And some people like that, it makes them feel better. And then it's easier to spot when or why relapses occur. Like you can be from here to here, and then here there's another spike, and you can, if you biomine, you can see why there was that spike. And it keeps you honest about whether you're achieving your goals. Uh, what should you log? Well, anything relating to uh, your mind and your body. We already talked about that. What do I log? I log food, how much I eat, uh, the calories, uh, sodium, uh, physical activity, how much I run around, heart rate, probably through the roof right now, blood pressure, uh, weight, BMI, 
measurements like neck, chest, waist, thigh, etc. How much and uh, the quality of my sleep, and if I'm feeling any pain, how bad is it and where is it, and how long do I have it? Huh? <laughs> Drinking's awesome. Oh, no, I don't want to see that. <laughs> There's no calories in drinks. <laughs> um, why do I bio mine? Well, I wanted to see if I could start doing it and then stick with it because I have a bad habit of going, oh, this is kind of neat and shiny, and then I get bored. So I wanted to see if, you know, by doing this every day, would I stick with it or would I eventually get tired of it? What would I change about it? And then I could track goals that I set for myself, and I just don't fucking trust doctors for obvious reasons. Yes? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. The question was, why don't doctors want you to know your numbers? Why don't they want you to take your own baselines? They think that we're incapable. You know, they went to school for eight years, so surely they're the only ones who can do this. Well, the, uh, yeah, exactly. Diabetics are told they have to track their blood sugar every day throughout the day. Why aren't we encouraged to do the same thing with our blood pressure, with our heart rate, with uh, our intake? A lot of people probably just won't do it, but... Exactly, this is what this is. Yes? No, actually, the question was, are, am, I, am I trying to get people to become hypochondriacs? <laughs> well, not, not, I guess if you're that kind of person, that, that would happen. But um, you don't just suddenly become a hypochondriac. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> but it just drives me nuts that the doctors don't encourage you to track your own information, to know, oh, is this normal? Well, I don't know. I don't stop and think, hmm, have I had the normal amount of sleep today? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. But so the, uh, the claim was that that's why that's how doctors make their money is by you coming to them. Well, why can't, why can't I track my own information, come to them with that data? That can be a diagnostic tool that they're completely ignoring. I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. So the argument is the accuracy of the data that not everybody will track the correct way because it's true, not everybody knows the proper way that you have to have your, um, your blood pressure cuff because there is a specific way and if you don't have it on right, you're gonna get a wrong reading. Exactly, and I'll actually be talking more about that kind of stuff uh, towards the end. Was there somebody else with a question? Oh, 
quite often when the doctor asks me, oh, do you smoke? No, I've never smoked. And I also don't drink. <laughs> Much. <laughs> so, a biomining lab. Why would you want to have your own biomining lab? Well, you have the freedom to do whatever the hell you want in, within reason in that lab. Convenience of having um, convenience and storage for all of your equipment. It's nice to have all of your stuff in one place. For example, like how many of you have a computer lab in your room or a den or a com you know a computer room? Yeah. Why is it easier to just go into your own space and work on your stuff without people harassing you? <laughs> Jason Street's pumping his fist in the air because he has a man cave, literally. <laughs> And that's the same reasons why you might want to have a biomining lab or a section of your uh, computer lab for biomining. And like I said, uh, peace and quiet, which is important when you're trying to establish your baselines. If you're trying to take your blood pressure and you have like little kids running around screaming, mommy, 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 your blood pressure is going to go through the fucking roof. Okay, so hardware. Uh, what kind of hardware is useful in a biomining lab? Well, there's the basic stuff, like a scale, a measuring tape, your computer, laptop, tablet, and a clock, watch, or timer. All of these things are really cheap. You can get them, well, except for the computer, laptop, tablet, but I assume everybody here has one of those things already. Varun, really? Really? <laughs> Varun Sharma does not own a fucking computer, laptop, or tablet. Really? <laughs> Uh, you can also go a step above, buy your own EKG to track your heart rate. They retail at least $35 for the cheaper models. An EEG machine, which tracks your brain waves, uh, those are about $225 plus. And then a pedometer, which, how cheap are they now? They're probably like 10, 15 bucks plus. I think McDonald's was giving them away with Big Macs one year. <laughs> Walk your fat ass over to McDonald's and buy a Big Mac. Huh? Oh. In case you're feeling fancy, you can also buy a WakeMate or a Zio personal sleep coach, which um, is like a cuff that you wear on your arm, and then it tracks, uh, tracks you while you sleep. Um, it senses movement because it has like an accelerometer in there, so it senses movement. Uh, how long you stay asleep. I think it also tracks heart rate, and it, um, the wake mate at least hooks up to your iPhone. Um, there's the Omron full body composition monitor, uh, which is about 129 bucks, and there's the Wi-Fi body scale, which is 160, and what that does is it tracks your weight and your BMI and, you know, um, and your height, and then it sends it wirelessly to your computer for you. Or, you can make stuff yourself, like an EKG. They're really cheap to make. Uh, there's a really famous one who made a um, EKG for less than 50 bucks. He used pennies as diodes. It can be done on a breadboard or something prettier or more compact. This is actually the picture of the first EKG I've ever made. So that proves that it's easy to make because I am not a coder or a maker. And I'm pretty sure you won't electrocute yourself. Now, they also have an open source EEG project. Uh, it's, all, it's called Open EEG on SourceForge. <clears throat> um, they have different versions of EEG, like modular and um, uh, I can't remember the others actually. Um, it's a little more difficult to make in code and there's, they even have it in big bold letters on their site you're probably gonna get electrocuted when making this at least once. And they say, don't test this out on yourself. And I'm like, who are you gonna test it out on? Your friend? <laughs> huh? Right, there's the MindFlex toy that you could also hack. Or I can barely hear you, Chris. Mm -hmm. 
what Chris is saying is that you can uh, easily uh, modify the mind flex, right? Mind flex, yeah. Um, and then you can also make a smartphone brain scanner. This was just uh, uh, talked about within the past week or two. Some guys within the Me Lab, which is a lab in a school, got together and they made a 14-channel EEG headset that works on their uh, and Nokia Android phone, and it uses the MindFlex, actually, like you were talking about. And uh, they state that the smartphone provides a touch-based interface with real-time brain state decoding and 3D uh, reconstruction, so you can sit there with the mind flex on your head, look at your phone, and just think about different stuff and see different areas of your brain light up. I'm sorry, Nikki, because that's really the point of this fucking talk. <laughs> I already said I'm not a maker. <laughs> You can also hack a scale. Um, there's a gentleman who on uh, Google Code posted up step by, more or less step-by-step -step instruction on how to hack and code your own uh, scale to, trans or to save it to an SD card. And then you can take the SD card and put it into your computer and um, build a graph of the data. And this guy, by going to the uh, Google Code page of his, He's really, really nice about answering any questions you may have or um, talking with you about ideas because I've bugged him a lot. I'm like, hey, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? And he's like, why don't you just do it yourself? And I'm like, no, you've already done it. <laughs> but he's really, really nice and patient. Software stuff. Um, apps for your phone. We're going to start with Android apps. There's a whole bunch of these um, available in the Android market, almost all of them are free. You don't have to get the pro version unless you really, really want to. Um, for food and exercise tracking, I, I personally use Calorie Counter. It has everything there. It has a food diary, a weight diary, and constructs a graph. You can uh, save recipes that you use and view it on the website. They have My Fitness Pal, and then they also have a sleep tracking app, which is SleepBot Tracker. Um, for iPhone apps, or iPad apps as well, they have Gym Buddy for about three bucks. Daily Burn, they have three different tiers. Like you can get the free version, the cheap version, and the I want everything version. Uh, and then they have Sleep Cycle for uh, sleep tracking. And uh, for, Windows Mo for Win Window Mobile, actually no, I'm lying. More iPhone <laughs> iPad apps. <laughs> Um, they have blood sugar tracking for diabetics. Um, I think they even came with um, an adapter where you can um, get your blood strip red and logged. I don't remember what it's called, but they do have that available. Uh, they have tally zoo where, we can, where you can just tally whatever you want. Daily tracker, again, you can tally whatever you want. Uh, microphone or Microsoft. I'm not doing Microsoft. Does anyone in here have a Microsoft, a Windows mobile phone? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> really? Do you want a real phone? <laughs> I can give you my crappy Android phone. <laughs> Is it? It's, it'll, it will be nice once Mango comes out eventually. <laughs> Now, you can't see this, but they're actually taking a picture of the dude with the Windows mobile phone for posterity. <laughs> are, wait, are you in a security shirt, too? I'm telling Relic. <laughs> oh, man. I know. <laughs> right. It <laughs> what? Yeah, which is also why I didn't like bother with the whole side of it because, like, like he said, um, Windows Mobile does take a lot of the apps from um, the iPhone and iPad and the Android devices and just port them over to Windows Mobile. Um, yeah, they just suck a little bit more because it's on a Windows Mobile phone. Um, for your, I'm going to get so much hate mail for that probably. 
For your computer, uh, stuff to download. Uh, Office software is awesome. Not, not Microsoft Office, like, like you can use OpenOffice or Google Docs. Um, spreadsheet software is really great because you can put in all your data and then they make pretty charts and graphs for you. Text editing software if you want to take journal entries like uh, if you want to keep a dream journal. Um, or note down if something particular happens so you can be like, oh, why did I eat more this day or why did my heart rate raise? Oh, well, according to this journal entry, I don't know, I just had a crappy day, so that's why all this happened. Web-based services. There's a lot of um, these websites available where you can sign up for free. Uh, they have da the Daily Mile, which you can log uh, how much you run, and Fat Secret, which is the uh, web version of Calorie Counter. General Goal Tracking. They have Mood Scope and Flux Stream. Uh, medical and uh, medicine and medical, where you can go to other people who are taking the medicine that your doctor just prescribed you. Uh, you can go to Cure Together and the Experimental Man Project. That's uh, both of those are really great because you can be like, oh, my doctor just prescribed me this. Let me look this up, and you can see how certain people reacted to this, and you can see, oh, another 40-year-old male with this condition is taking this medicine, and he feels like killing himself. I'm not taking this medicine. Um, for sleep, you can use Yonlog, and Tylenol PM has a sleep tracker, which actually doesn't suck. Um, all of these are free, and quite a few of them port over to like Twitter and the Facebooks, so that way you can keep yourself accountable with your friends and annoy the crap out of them, like, oh, hey, Totenkopf just ran 3.68 miles in like five hours. <laughs> 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 right. And then drink herself into a coma. Um, and then I have all these sources that will be available on my website, or if you really care, I'll put them on Twitter or whatever. Um, this d DIY stuff. The top one is the guy who made the uh, do-it-yourself ECG for under 50 bucks. Uh, I stole a whole bunch of, well, not a whole bunch, but a, quite a few ideas from Neon Rain because she's been doing a lot of stuff with EEG and EKG. The Open EEG project from SourceForge and the uh, Google code page. All the apps I stole from Lifehacker lists about two weeks ago. Um, computer software is the Quantified Self website. Okay, any questions? Oh, the question. Hmm? So the question was, what kind of pain scale do I use? Well, I use the one that the doctors do. The two, the zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. It's a crappy scale. It's a horrible scale because you can tell your pain by what smiley or frowny face you are. But that's the one doctors use. So when you go into there and you're like, oh. I have a uh, eight on the pain scale in my upper torso or whatever, they'll know exactly where to start. Right, exactly. There's, there's no room for uh, uh, changing it. It's well established, huh? Oh, I've never had a kidney stone, so I don't know. I'm sorry. Water sickness. <laughs> okay. So, uh, anyway, yeah, like, so you, like, it goes from I'm fine, and then you're like, oh, I have a cramp, and then ah, ow, and then, okay, this is exploding, and then you're like, I'm dead, all right? So, like, <laughs> but, like, because, because you're, you're able to see it as 
Right, like... Right, so like, for example, um, when I had that pain, I was like, oh, this really hurts. And then I'm like, could it be uh, heartburn? No, this doesn't feel like heartburn. Oh, could it be because I'm a woman? Is it is it like a female thing? No, I, I, I feel that every month, and I it doesn't hurt to breathe. <laughs> so it was argued that it technically was a woman thing, and you're right. I had... <laughs> So it's like the equivalent of like getting a tumor on my ball. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Killface. Die in a fire. Right, and that's one of the uh, good things about keeping a journal is that, like, oh, six this day, what happened? Oh, I was being a wuss. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yes, you can, uh, that's absolutely, a, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm having brain farts, but yes, having qualitative and quantitative data side by side is something that's really helpful and a really big part of biomining. That's okay, because I kind of made up the term with neon rain like a few months ago, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he, he recommended Moody Me, which is an app that helps you track your mood. You can say how you feel and then um, something that m might be associated with why you're feeling that way that day. <laughs> I'm like, are you getting paid by these guys to just push this app? Oh, this random person's going to be talking about this stuff. We can sell this. Actually, I do sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right, it can, it can tell. <laughs> yes. Um, I've stuck with it for two years. I did, so I started with a really long list of stuff I wanted to biomine. Um, maybe about 25 different things. 
I wanted to know everything. And then now I mind just the things that I talked about because I'm, I'm like, bored now. <laughs> So, first of all, you have to want to track the data. Like, if it's, I know, you're like, oh, that's so gay. Why'd you say that? Um, like, you, I, I usually carry a moleskin around with me. So, like, just in case something happened, like I had an idea or something, I'm like, oh. And then I'm like, well, why don't I use it for other stuff, too? And so, like I said, I started with this long list of stuff that I wanted to keep a track of. And then over time, I'm like, well, I really only want to know about my sleep and my weight and my blood pressure because my doctor's bitching about my blood pressure. And I don't really think it's that high. And Um, the question was, do it, did I see any problems uh, trying to establish a baseline and see any deviations? Yeah, it took a good, like, six months for me. It could take other people longer or shorter amount of time. But it took me a while to say, okay, so this is my normal um, blood pressure at 8 o'clock in the morning. This is my normal heart rate at 8 o'clock in the morning. And then, you know... Oh, why is it up here? Oh, because my mother called me. Why is it down there? I don't know. I think I took a Percocet. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Right. What types of things? Um. What? <laughs> Why is Varun even talking? Don't you have a drink or something? Uh, no? I'm oh. <laughs> Sober and don't own a computer. Right. I'm sorry, can you say your question one more time? Right. Oh, what have, what have I learned from BioMind that I didn't know before? Um, well, I, I, okay, for example, cons. Everybody's like, oh, I ate so much during con. Oh, I, I gained so much weight. Well, they don't know why they gained that weight. Yeah, we drink a lot, a lot, and that's a whole bunch of calories. And But we're also eating out all the time, and then we sit and listen to boring talks about biomining for an hour and don't move. I mean, when I'm home, when I'm home, I consume maybe uh, 1,500 or so calories a day, and then I try to um, exercise, like go walk or run for at least a mile, and that helps keep me sane and normal. And um, when I go to cons, and and I feel great, like I'm happy, I'm able, my back doesn't hurt. And then when I come back from DEF CON, when I haven't done any of that stuff, I've had like 50 million calories. And yeah, I've kind of walked over a mile, mm -hmm. but not really. And then I get home and I just feel sluggish and kind of depressed and burnt out. Uh, stuff like that was pretty interesting to glean. So I try to do better. Well, I say I'm going to do better the next con and don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like Killface, who tells me to drink all the time. <laughs> Actually, yes. Actually, yeah, that I, I do. <laughs> I don't publish it to the groups because I'm like, that's mine. Don't touch. But like when I had the pain, I had my journals and stuff with me. And she's like, oh, it's just normal. Or, oh, this is going to pass. I'm like, no. And then I threw my journal at her in, some, in a USB drive with all the graphs. And then she's like, oh, 
well, I guess we can go get, go get you an MRI. And I'm like, thanks, that would be swell. Huh? <laughs> yeah, HIPAA compliance, what? <laughs> Yes, actually, because I thought, that, I mean, if I wouldn't have pushed her and said, here's the data to back me up, I promise you I'm not a liar, I know how I feel, uh, the oncologist said it would have burst, and it would have hurt like a billion times worse. Right. So it, it's really, it's really hard to get doctors to believe that you actually have been collecting this data, that you didn't just trump it up for this office so that you can, you know, get whatever you want or the desired result. And um, you just have to, if, I don't know how many of you guys have a regular doctor. Like I've been to this doctor for about a year and she still gave me pushback and I'm like, hey, no, when have I, one of my big things was like, when have I over exaggerated about any of the data that I collected? And she's like, Never, it's actually been kind of accurate, Just very begrudgingly, and I'm like, <laughs> yes. Well, they have, well, when you go in, however often you go, I mean, I guess you're supposed to go every three to six months to get a checkup. Um, they log all that data in your uh, medical chart, but three to six months in between data collection, a whole bunch of stuff can happen to you physically, emotionally, et cetera, et cetera. In that time, it's inaccurate. Right. So the question was, uh, do I know of anyone or any instance of people uh, recording or tracking cortisol data by um, the amount of cortisol in a hair strand? And uh, No, not yet. Maybe something on the quantified cell forums because those guys are really on top of everything um, associated with self-tracking. Yes, Ed, I'm sorry. Exactly. We all have different baselines. Right. You, uh, and it's really sad that you really do have to push doctors because over time, the longer they've been a doctor, the more apathetic that they become. I mean, I know that's a terrible generalization, but over time, they're just like, oh, you're complaining a lot. Here, have some pill pain pills.
Right. Thanks for telling me that thing I already knew. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, definitely. Anybody who has not seen Neon Rain's DEF CON 15, 16, and uh, I believe 17 talk, maybe 18, she's done a whole bunch of stuff really in depth about EKG and EEG. It's from the same sources that I've mentioned, but she's really good at explaining that kind of stuff for the beginners. Her um, 15 talk about uh, using an e, what was it, EKG to uh, play Tetris was just really cool, and that's kind of what got me into this whole thing. Right, and which is why uh, why Neon, especially I, I don't well I don't know her exact reason, but like one of the reasons why I like to talk about this kind of stuff in the Hacker and Mayor conferences is because we're the exact kind of people that go, oh, I want to be able to do this. How do I do that? And then you spend days and days and days just uh, programming this little Arduino to do whatever, like. Um, there's a guy who programmed a belt to vibrate whenever you're facing due north so that your body eventually remembers which way north is. Three minutes? Okay. Yeah, the Fitbit, I talked about it. I think so. I could be lying. Yeah. The Fitbit's a pretty nifty little device. So can you get to the data though? Like I know it presents data, but can you get to the raw data that it's stored I honestly don't know. I haven't played with the Fitbit. It does do a lot of cool data. I tried to look into it, but you also pay the local fee, which sucks. Right. It is. Uh, last questions. Oh.